Welcome in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord be with you and also with you. It's great to welcome you to our worship today, Sunday the 14th of February, that's Valentine's Day. So our service today is based around the theme of love, not just romantic love, but love in all its dimensions. So our opening statement says this. Today we are celebrating Valentine's Day by reminding ourselves of God's gift of love to each one of us. God's gift of love that says you are worth it. In turn, we are called to share that love with others, saying to each person, you're worth it. So we come to the call to worship. God stands with his arms wide open, ready to welcome us with an enormous hug. God sits with his hands held out, ready to listen to our troubles and soothe our worries. God whoops with hands punching the sky, ready to delight and celebrate all that we can be. So let us worship the God who first loved us. And now we're going to sing our first song, The Big Family of God. You can join in singing it if you're at home watching this. like pink and some like blue some of us like reading books some of us like feeding ducks that's because we're different me and you but God loves to wear. All of us have different families. Some of us are very loud. Some of us don't make a sound. That's because we're different, you and me. But God loves everyone he's made. God loves each of us. I've got some sweets here that are older than I am. Well, these particular sweets aren't older than I am, but Love Hearts, which is what these are, were first made in 1954 
a very long time ago. Let's have a look inside and see what's inside these ones. We'll see whether they can teach us anything about love. First one says here, I don't know whether you can see it, it says dream on. I don't think you're going to be able to see that because it's the same colour as the, uh, uh, the writing's the same colour as the uh, suite. Let's look at this next one. So we'll, we'll look and see what they say. Uh, let's party. It's true. Lucky day. Dream on. Epic. Well, this one's got an emoji on it of uh, two dots for an eye and a straight mouth. I'm not sure what that's supposed to mean. And this one says, gorgeous. Well, I don't know about you, but I think these are all a bit disappointing. They're not really about what love is at all. I suppose you might say gorgeous to someone that you're in love with. And you might say, let's party if you want to have a really good time. But epic, it's true, dream on, lucky day. How are we going to find out what love is really about? Love hearts may sell lots of sweets, but they don't really tell us very much about love. We'll find out more in a few minutes time. Perhaps they taste better than they look. Well, I think the taste's the same as it was all those years ago, before I was born. God, who turns the world's values upside down. We think of our world where unneeded luxuries are sold with promises of increasing our feelings of self-worth. And we thank you that you love each one of us here and now as we are. God, who turns the world's values upside down. We think of our world where beauty's secret, we are told, is hidden in a jar of face cream. And we thank you that beauty comes from within and is a reflection of your love for us. God, who turns the world's values upside down. We think of our world where love is shown by the size of the bouquet or packaging of the chocolates. And we thank you that your love is shown in flesh and blood, community and stories. God, who turns the world's values upside down. Forgive us when we look to the world to find our self-worth. Forgive us when we value others according to their looks or their age or their mobile phone. And we thank you that we receive your forgiveness and your love and hear you say to us, you are worth it. Amen. Amen. We sing our next song, God's love is bigger than a burger. God's love is bigger than a burger, it is bigger than a mouse Bigger than an elephant and bigger than a house Bigger than a bus and bigger than a tree Bigger than a mountain, bigger than the sea What about a cloud? Bigger. What about the sky? Bigger. What about the earth? Bigger. What about the moon? Bigger. What about the sun? And what about the stars? Bigger. Is anything bigger than this big love? Uh, no Big and wonderful, big and wonderful God's love is bigger than a burger, it is bigger than a mouse Bigger than an elephant and bigger than a house Bigger than a bus and bigger than a tree Bigger than a mountain, bigger than the sea What about a cloud? Bigger. What about the sky? What about the earth? Bigger. What about the moon? What about the sun? Bigger. And what about the stars? Bigger. Is anything bigger than this big love? Uh, no Big and wonderful, big and wonderful
reading today comes from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 13, verses 4 to 7 and verse 13. Love is always patient and kind. Love is not boastful or conceited. It is never rude and never seeks its own advantage. Love does not take offence or store up grievances. Love does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but finds its joy in the truth. Love is always ready to make allowances, to trust, to hope, and, and to endure whatever comes. These three rename faith, hope, and love. The greatest of these is love. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A big thank you to all the children for taking part in that reading. Thank you very much. The children in our primary schools have seen that reading this week and heard it already in collective worship. I was doing some colouring in of a picture which included those words. Love is always patient and kind. Love is not boastful or conceited. It is never rude and never seeks its own advantage and so on. And the children watched me as I was colouring in and talking about what those words mean and about what it is to show love. The only trouble is it's really difficult when you see those words to think, well, does my life match up to that example? And that's where I find it very helpful to think about replacing the word love with the word Jesus, because that makes it more personal. Jesus is always patient and kind. Jesus is not boastful or conceited. Jesus never is rude and never seeks his own advantage. Jesus does not take offence or store up grievances. Jesus does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but finds his joy in doing the truth. Jesus is always ready to make allowances, to trust, to hope and to endure whatever comes. And when we put Jesus in, in place of love, it becomes personal. We think of a real person who did those things. But as I reminded the children in collective worship this week, it wasn't always easy for Jesus to show that love. In fact, many people didn't want him to show that kind of love and he ended up being killed for his pains. And I reminded the children of the Christingle. I'm sure you remember it. The orange stands for the world. The candle stands for the light of the world. God's light shining out and the cocktail sticks with the fruit and the sweets remind us of all God's wonderful gifts that he gives to us. But around the middle of the orange, around the middle of the world is a band of red and that red stands for Jesus' blood because of what it cost him to show that love. And that's why in the picture that I showed to the children, the word love was colored in every time in red. It is not easy to love. But the good news is that Jesus came back to life again. After he'd been killed, he was raised from the dead and by his Holy Spirit is with us now. And it's that that enables us not just to put our Jesus name in that sentence, in those sentences, but to put our names in those sentences. And so we can think of that. Doris is always patient and kind. Esme is not boastful or conceited, is never rude and never seeks her own advantage. Harry does not take offence or store up grievances. Bill does not rejoice in the doing of wrong, but finds his joy in doing the truth. 
William is always ready to make allowances, to trust, to hope and to endure whatever comes. Well, that might seem a bit fanciful in some ways, but the thing that makes the difference is the Holy Spirit of Jesus living inside, in, inside us, helping us to grow more like Jesus, which is the aim of the Christian. I wonder what you thought of those love hearts a bit earlier on, and I wonder what love heart you would choose to write, to give to someone. I had a dream last night. I dreamt that the postman came with a great big parcel and I opened up the parcel and inside were some gigantic love hearts. I wonder if you can guess what the first one was that I discovered. Here it is. You're worth it. That's what God says to each of us. Because of what Jesus has done, dying on a cross for us, giving us his Holy Spirit, God loves us so much that he says to us, you're worth it. And then he tells us to go and say it to others. Because everyone made in God's image is a child of God and everyone in God's eyes is worth it. Let us rejoice and thank God for his love for each one of us. Amen. And now let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing our next song. Jesu, Jesu, fill us with your love.
special prayer for today, the Collect. Almighty God, you have taught us through your Son that love is the fulfilling of the law. Grant that we may love you with our whole hearts and our neighbours as ourselves. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We come to our prayers for others and ourselves. At the entrance to the supermarket, a woman stands with a collecting tin and a box of fabric daffodils, reminding us that life is not always a bed of roses or a box of chocolates. So today we pause to remember those who will find this day difficult due to illness and side effects from toxic treatments or waiting for the results of the latest tests. As we watch our televisions, we see gritty domestic dramas interspersed with adverts full of heart-shaped chocolate boxes, reminding us that romantic love is not all it is cracked up to be. So today, we pause to remember those who will find this day difficult, where relationships are broken or full of pain, or where our search for love leaves us feeling rejected and alone. In the florists, we see a loved one's favourite flower, or a wreath of white flowers that spell out a name, a son's giant-sized photo on the side of a pub, the words, our hero, surrounded by red poppies. So today we pause to remember those who will find this day difficult, those whose loved ones are no longer with us, but are held in your eternal embrace. God dries our tears and smiling reaches out to take our hand, to soothe and caress our broken lives and slowly make us laugh again. Amen. And now we join in saying the Lord's Prayer. As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. We sing our final song, Make Me a Channel of Your Peace.
responsive blessing and dismissal today. God shows us love through friends and family, in cards made with crayons and glue and sticky homemade cupcakes. God knows that beauty is not found in a pot of face cream and sends us out into the week saying, you're worth it. Jesus shows us love through stories and parables, through sharing food and friendship with those who have made a mess of life. Jesus knows that value is not found in the status society gives us and sends us out into the week saying, you're worth it. The Holy Spirit shows us love in unexpected places, in random acts of kindness and welcoming of strangers. The Spirit knows that worth is not found in bunches of flowers, in slushy cards or boxes of chocolates, and sends us out into the week challenging us to say, you're worth it. So let's send each other out into the week by saying the words, you're worth it, to one another. You're worth it. Amen. Thank you so much for joining in our worship today. I hope you found it something different that's made us think a bit, challenged us to go a bit deeper into God's love for us and what it means that he says to us that we're worth it and that we say that to one another, you're worth it. This coming week, it's Ash Wednesday on Wednesday and there will be a service of Holy Communion from St Mary's Church at 10 o'clock, which will be live streamed. We're not allowed to do ashing uh, this year, but it will be a special service to mark the beginning of Lent. Also this week on Tuesday evening, we're going to try a social event, a quiz by Zoom. There'll be light-hearted questions, so it's not too serious, but an opportunity to enjoy fellowship and friendship and fun uh, before Lent starts. So if you'd like to join in, it'll be on Zoom uh, at seven o'clock. It won't last more than an hour and uh, the code for Zoom will come on the screen in just a moment. Uh, if you forget it, it'll be in the email that I send out um, and uh, if you forget that then text me or email me and I'll send you the Zoom code. Anyone is welcome to join in. And our Lent groups begin the week after next and if you want to know more details about those, you'll find them uh, in the emails that I send out. And if you want the Zoom code for those groups on Tuesdays and Thursdays, uh, do let me know. So stay safe and God bless.